Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at Adobe Bridge, which is a companion program that comes with Photoshop. You'll use Bridge to actually organize your images, moving them between folders, changing names, applying ratings, adding metadata, etc. One of the new things about Adobe Bridge CS4, though, is the ability to actually import from a camera memory card. So we've got a memory card reader here. We're going to load this up. This is a compact flash card, but it works with all types of memory cards, whether you're using an SD card or a Sony memory stick, any of those will work. Let's go ahead and plug this in. And if you had a camera, you can also connect that directly, although I prefer to use memory cards. One thing that a lot of folks don't realize is that if you had your camera hooked up and it were to lose power in the middle of the transfer, it can actually corrupt your memory card. So using a standalone card reader is good. Cuts down on any of those possible corrupted cards and frees your camera up so it can be out doing work while somebody else is loading images or just cuts down on wear and tear. Now, once we have that loaded, we can launch Bridge. Bridge allows us to import. Now, it's pretty straightforward. You'll see that there are several workspaces when using Bridge but you want to generally stick with the Essentials or the Metadata workspace for import. When you're all set, you can click right here in the strip bar and say, Get Photos from Camera. When you click that, it's going to open up a message saying, Do you want the photo downloader to automatically launch whenever a camera or card reader is detected? I'm going to say yes. Now, this works well because it'll mean that whenever we plug in a new card, it'll open up the downloader, and that's great. The only reason not to turn this on is if you're using something like Aperture or iPhoto or some other program to catalog your images besides Bridge. But for many of you, Bridge will do a great job for this, and this downloader makes it a little bit easier. Now, it's saying, what do we want it to get? And you could refresh the list, but here it's detecting a camera card from a Nikon D70, and that there's 66 files on the image. We're going to go ahead and choose a location for those images. So I'm going to target my hard drive and create a new folder, and we'll just name this Transfer. You could, of course, give this a more specific name about a particular project if you'd like. Next, you could tell it to create subfolders based upon the shot date. Now, this will do it by year, month, and date or by just month and date, and this makes it a little bit easier if you've got images captured from a variety of times. If you want to rename the files, you can, but I generally recommend doing this later. The only reason to rename upon import is if you very quickly have to turn the images around and get them out the door to somebody, and you want them to have a custom tag, like maybe the client's name. We're going to go ahead and tell it when it's done to send these over to Adobe Bridge. Now, there is a very important option here, which is to convert to DNG. This is a substantial thing that you're going to have to think about. Many people choose to keep their images in the raw format that comes from their actual camera manufacturer. Now, camera raw formats vary, and each one is generally proprietary to a particular brand of camera manufacturer. But this still works out okay in most cases. The concern is, is what happens if that camera manufacturer goes out of business in the future or changes their technology? Well, we haven't faced this yet, but Adobe offers the universal DNG or digital negative format that is designed to really get around this. If you want to convert to DNG, you can, and under settings, you could tell it to include a JPEG preview, as well as to preserve the original raw image that's in there and embed the original raw file if you want to. Now that option will make a larger file, but it will give you both the raw file and the DNG file nested together. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel for a second and uncheck that. You're going to want to do a little more research on the DNG format and decide if this is something you'd like to make part of your workflow. Now, when we're all set here, we can choose a couple things. We could specify that we want to delete the original files if we'd like to clear the memory card or leave that unchecked. I generally choose to leave the photos on the card until I know I've successfully loaded them into my system and performed one manual backup, either to a DVD or a separate archive drive. So 
don't be too quick to actually blow those images away. If you'd like more options, just click the Advanced Dialog button here, and you'll see you actually get a great preview of all the images on the card. This means that you could select which images come in, so if there are photos you know you don't want, you could just uncheck them. You see here we have some materials from a recent video shoot, including some product shots, and we could choose which parts we'd like to actually add. So if there's photos in here you don't want, you can actually get rid of them. I'll go ahead and get rid of these two because I don't need them. When you're satisfied, you can go ahead and click Get Photos. You also can actually add some basic metadata, which is useful. For example, applying a copyright to your images before import. When we're all set, I'll go ahead and let these come in by choosing Get Photos. To make it easier, it gives you a detailed progress dialog window. You actually see the thumbnails of the images as they load and a progress bar. Do not disconnect your photos from the photo reader. Leave that card in place or you will damage it and of course the images that are importing. When it is done, it will be perfectly clear that it is safe to remove the card. Notice the dialog box has closed and we've been returned to Bridge CS4. The folders are organized by date. So in this case, we have images from September 5th, 2008, September 9th, September 11th, and the 13th. I could step into that folder and see the results, as well as adjust the size of the thumbnails to make it a little bit easier. This is just one of many layouts in Bridge, and you could use this to add ratings as well as explore the information about the particular photo. If you want to go up a level, just click on the folder and you can switch between. Now, Bridge offers some other great workspaces that you should check out, including a film strip, which makes it really easy to look at a large quantity of images. You get a great film strip down below. You can click on a particular image here to open it up and see it. And if you need to, you can actually go ahead and take a look at this in a carousel type view. I'll choose View, Slideshow, and I can now use my arrow keys to navigate through the images and take a look at multiple photos. I'll press Escape to get rid of that. Another option is to choose View, Review Mode, and they actually enter a carousel-like display where you can quickly switch between. And once you're here, you can add ratings using your keys. Use the numbers 1 through 5 to assign a star rating, and you can quickly step through the shots. When done, just click Escape. So, Bridge has lots of uses, especially for reviewing large quantities of images. It's a whole separate program from Adobe, but it is bundled with Adobe Photoshop, and you will want to make it part of your workflow. It's also great for doing things like making web galleries and contact sheets, and quickly organizing images into separate folders for large jobs. My name is Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. We've got a lot of great things coming up for you in upcoming weeks, including we're going to be looking at the Camera Raw interface next week, so don't miss that. If you're shooting raw photos, you're going to want to know how to really get them right before you bring them into Photoshop. My name is Rich Harrington. Check out our blog at rastervector.com. And if you haven't had a chance to take a look, try our new book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4 from PeachBit Press, and you've got a discount code here that you can use to make that a little bit better. Thanks again.